policy situation in Ghana in relation to trade. Um, what is the environment? What does it look like for a trader? Uh, what does it look like for business people, for entrepreneurs? I think we formulate policies um, to enhance on productivity of a region, to enhance on general well-being of the people. And for us traders, we also want policies that will help us thrive on doing our business. Um, if you look at the general um, environment, economic environment that we find ourselves and the policies that are being made lately, then I would say that some are impacting positively, but majority of policies that are being formulated lately are impacting negatively on um, trading activities. I've heard us talking about protestionist measures and for substitution and all that. But I also know that without trading, there's no country. Uh, industrialization thrives on vibrant trading sector. And no two is about that. If you look at our even local settings, when you go to the villages, villages come alive only when there's a market need. I hope I'm right. Manufacturing does, um, does not end unless the goods reaches the final consumer. So we are very much integral part of production. And so we do not talk about industrialization without making it up with trading because we are the distributive leg of trading. And that policies that are structured to, um, um, to suppress trading means that we want to suppress industrialization itself. Are, are you able to give any insights, specifics? Is there any policy that has hindered? That has been the pain of trading, manufacturing, agriculture, and everything. And that if you have a, a monetary policy rate, that may cost of a, 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 a borrowing extortively higher. Then you have killed industries, much as you are killing trading. We are talking about um, taxation. Excessive taxation kills industries. And that's, we are not competing with ourselves as only the against. We are competing with the rest of our neighboring countries. And so the kind of taxes that are being imposed every now and then on us, even the recent one, the three of no taxes that were handed over to us, are all suppressing uh, uh, the trade that we do. If you look at our tax regime, the V80, it's structured that uh, it does not ensure uniformity. We have a tax system that we have um, one group of people paying um, the standard rate of 22%. Another uh, group paying flat rate of 4% and others not paying at all. And we are all are in the same vicinity of trading. What tax system have you got? And it's not helping us. And then if we are not all, uh, able to comply, then we are made to be policed by uh, people coming over you with invigilation and all that. And so, the, if you look at the cost of doing business at the temper port, it's so high uh, that it does not ensure even compliance. Government want to get uh, as much is uh, revenue, and yet government have made it such that compliance is virtually nil because um, doing business at our port is uh, extraordinarily very high. We're talking about the benchmark in, uh, uh, reduction policy. That has come to uh, mitigate on um, this uh, high cost of doing business. We're talking about the, uh, the COVID-19 limit. It gave us a one purpose uh, task to help fight the COVID. Now, COVID is no more, or is the new norm.
Uh, so why do you continue? Even the president himself has said that um, COVID is a thing of the past. And so why do we maintain? We have a, a, a special levy for import of 2% that the previous administration brought and said that after the sunset and that we are in a problem and that after some time when we are done with that problem it will be taken off the table and it's still there. And so all these things have compounded and make our um, uh, businesses not competitive. Because we are in competition with Togo, we are in competition with um, Nigeria and then the, the West Coast. And because of this, we are being urged out of competition. Not only the trading community, the importers, but also the manufacturers. And that's why we have to look at the excessive decision that is being counterproductive. That we are not even relevant in the scheme of affairs of the continental free trade, which have been said for this year, cited here. And that our, price, our goods are not uh, priced. If we talk about industrialization, it does not mean industrialization should be overpriced. But you cannot overprice industrialization because you are competing with the rest of the world. If your produce is very high, quality is not low, then it might not be said that we are against that we have to patronize goods that are overpriced and goods uh, that are of not quality. And so um, pricing has been a and overtaxation has been a problem. Um, to the growth of businesses in, in the country, such as the ones that have been created, right. and especially the new taxes that have been slapped on us because of the IMF program, the three of those taxes, because you want to increase productivity. How do you increase productivity when you are overtaxing um, um, your, your farmers, when you are overtaxing your manufacturers, when at the same time they are borrowing at over 35 percent, where our counterparts are borrowing at 3 percent. Mm. And so, we are more prone to even do business outside. As traders, I have to be patriotic. But it does not mean that I have to buy something that is overpriced. And that I do not even have access to credit. Well, my, uh, my, my lot will be better by going out there to abroad where they will give me surprise credit of, of, of about 120 days. I do not say that because I'm a Ghanaian, and where I do not even have surprise credit from the manufacturers because they also are lack. Then I'm forced to buy goods that are made in Ghana. So these are uh, some of the things that are working against the growth of businesses. That's I get it. It's, it's a lot um, for, for business people, you know, when um, these things occur. And I think the way forward, if you're asking if they, they should push back, the way forward for me will be that we, we really have to open up the conversation to talk about these things. So an opportunity like this gives everybody, entrepreneurs, people in business, the opportunity to really say what is on their minds and how they feel about our policies. And then it also gives policymakers an opportunity to also have an open line of communication with business people or the, or the business community. I think we ought to talk more. We ought to assess the situation, the things that we do, decisions that we take, policies that are in place. And then we ought to take stock of the effects of these policies. Are we going forward? Are we moving backwards? What are the real issues here? Um, have we communicated these taxes well? Do we have adequate feedback? Because I think policy making is a continuum. It goes on and on and on. It's not stagnant. It's something that changes over time. So the, if, you, if you're asking me, I think this sort of conversation really open up um, and give us an opportunity to address these issues as we ought to. Right. The conversation can still be expanded, especially where uh, these issues are concerned, the taxes and the cost. You mentioned the policy rate, but you know, uh, I think there have been moments where government tried to reduce the policy rate, but at the time, the conditions in the economy get so difficult that reducing it is detrimental. Uh, so is, is there still an open way for the conversation to be expanded and these taxes probably amended? 
is that still a possibility or are we beyond that point? I will come back to the Deputy Minister on that question later. But let me bring in Mr. Clement Jose uh, Amoko. Uh, we've listened to Dr. Obi. Um, he, he never holds back with, because he, he feels the pitch <laughs> as, a, as a business person. But from, from your experience, um, how have the social economic policies in, in, in implemented in Ghana? Uh, There's no policy that has not been affected by person in the When you're asking of uh, social economic policy, there are policies that are set up by government and a strategy to use with the limited resources to get the maximum benefit out of it. And so here, um, when you look at our limited resources, with ever moving population and some other factors, there's a need for policies to address this issue as and when they grow because population is not static. But then the policy comes from the government. It doesn't come from the private sector. So the government will have to find out the key policies that will address some of the social economic problems that we have. In coming out with some of these policies, I think I need to mention a few, like uh, education policy, environmental policy, investment policy, etc., to address about three of them to show its impact on the uh, private sector. We look at the labor policy, uh, labor regression. That has to do uh, the laws that we, uh, let, let me say, the labor has a right to strike. That's, and it's supposed to produce with the employers to make sure that they get the maximum output. There are certain times their rights affect some of the cost structure of every employee, employer. Probably agitation for higher wages. Probably uh, asking for some incentives that will have effects on the employer. And so if these policies are not well addressed, they can either have positive or negative because then in addressing for, for that, you realize that the cost of production can go high and the profits that the employer should have put in will go low, will not be maximized. And so every policy has something to do with it. Now, you, you also look at the environment, the environmental policy that addresses like pollution, etc. And these policies are supposed to make sure that uh, we, we don't adhere, we adhere to some policies that will not jeopardize the environment. But some of them are very innovative in policy driven. In that, if you have such an environmental policy, you can end up even being creative. Let's look at zoom line. When you have to clear the waste, and everywhere I keep on saying that wherever there's a problem, there's money. That he took advantage to look at the environmental uh, policies and address them. Now he's making a lot of jobs out of it. Now we can reassemble plastic and make money. Some of the waste were used as money. So every policy comes to us. We have trade policies like barrier restrictions that we don't even allow some goods to come into our country. Like what we are talking now with the impost of decision that the government is talking about it. Now it means that we have to produce locally. We also want to know whether we have done the right thing to make sure that we have the capacity to produce. How are we going to go around it? If the policy works well, it depends on the fundamentals that we put in place. If it doesn't work well, we we'll still need to re-engineer it and move forward. So there is no policy that does not affect trade and other businesses. So yes, it affects it. But what are we seeing when we come to Ghana? We see something very different. Has the country built enough giants to hold the private sector? And uh, I, the minister said some of the taxes must be, yes. I think that for every nation to try, we must pay the tax. Are we seeing the benefits in our country that all the taxes that we are paying are well utilized? Or the taxes, the revenue that we get, are not used for the benefit of the individual, what we're told that all these policies that we have discussed is about the individual. 